With almost 750 miles of coastline in Wales, there's no shortage of accessible sea salt. But you need skill to extract it, and Stephen went to the Isle of Anglesey off the north coast. It was just after dawn, and David Lee Wilson, owner of the Anglesey Sea Salt Company, was starting his day's work. Just like a cook wants good ingredients, we want good seawater, and this is absolutely pristine. David has no need of an artificial filtering process to rid the water of any impurities. We've got a mussel bed that we're standing on, okay, right. and that's naturally purifying the seawater all the time. The concentration of salt in seawater varies, so David needs to test that it's suitable for economic extraction. So if you look through that, there's a line between 3 and 4 per cent, and that's telling me that we're in a, a good area for pumping seawater yeah. ashore. The water is pumped into the crystallisation room, where it's heated to evaporate most of the water. Hygiene becomes crucial now, with even beards protected to avoid shedding any stray hairs. Like a cloud can only hold so much moisture before it's got to start raining, yeah. seawater can only hold so much salt before the salt has got to come out as right. salt. Okay. And then just adding a tiny bit of heat triggers this magical result. When the salt crystals have formed, the product then needs to be collected. It takes about a pint of seawater to yield one pinch of salt. John and Keith, every morning, they will come in and harvest with a stainless steel shovel. But that day, it was Stephen's job. That was a lot of it, isn't it? The next stage is to clean it. Rinsing the salt is labour-intensive. It takes 15 minutes to purify each 20-kilo batch. It's hand-produced. We haven't found a machine to replace John and Keith. <laughs> I don't think we could. The cleaned salt is then ready for the cooking pot. And at this stage, the salt is glistening. It's got a, a sort of snowflake appearance. All that was left to do was to sample the fruits of their labour. And what better way than on a plump, sweet tomato? I always enjoyed salt on tomato, actually. To be honest with you, it's, uh, it's quite a favourite of mine, to be honest. A softness. That is so good. Tomato. That is fantastic. Back in the Great British Menu kitchen, Stephen's pre-salted ducks are ready to be cooked. He's making salt duck breast and duck hash with a quail's egg, peas and broad beans. It sort of looks like a double bain-marie almost. You put a little bit of water right. in, in there. When I cooked this dish before, I did actually steam them, so uh, okay, please so be careful slightly. with my time in there. Well, that's a first. He's actually practised this dish before. It's essential, though, to get the timings perfect, so he's calculating carefully. This might take just a tad longer in this bain-marie because it's insulated more, you know? Angela's making roasted fillet of veal with a cheese cream sauce, peas, broad beans, baby artichokes and potato gnocchi. So she has plenty to do as well. Just roasting off my meat. Right. Um, just roast it off a thyme, bit of thyme, butter, garlic. Yeah. And then I can rest it, and then before we go, I'll flash it in the oven. How do you um, think it's best to cook that when you for this? I just, because it is the fillet, I'm just going to pan roast it, colour it off. To what degree? You know, to, to, I would say to medium. I, don't, I think rare is too the other way. I think medium.